Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So the latest version of 351 Elec released about two weeks ago. And initially the team said, hey, hold off on making a video. We got a couple bugs to squash first. Well, I'm happy to report that the bugs have now been squashed and I've been given a green light to show you all the new updates with this incredible firmware. There's quite a number of fixes and new features available with this new update, which they're calling Crazy Hedgehog. But the updates that excite me the most have to do with upgrades to the emulators, which are going to give you better performance on quite a few systems. First and foremost, the Retro Run emulator now works with Nintendo 64, and I'm seeing some hefty improvements with Nintendo 64 gameplay in particular. Additionally, they got Retro Run working on the RG351V version of 351 Elec, which means you'll have improved performance on Dreamcast here on the RG351V. And additionally, they fixed Sega Saturn on these devices. Now, when I say fixed, I don't mean they're going to play super smoothly, but at this point they at least play, and I'll show you some of that gameplay here in this video. And there's a couple more things I want to go over as well, so without any further delay, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so here's my summary of the upgraded features and fixes that they've included with this Crazy Hedgehog update. And I don't want to go through these line by line, but you can see here that RetroArch has been updated, they've also updated all the existing cores, and now RetroRun is fully integrated into the operating system for Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, and Sega Saturn. Additionally, we can play LZ Doom, which allows us to play Doom mods, and there's quite a few new engines and new RetroArch cores that are now available. And finally, they've done quite a few bug fixes, and they now restored background music to be able to play MP3 files. Okay, to get started, I'll have a link to the 351 Elect GitHub page in my video description. But you basically want to get to the releases page. And here you can read all the upgrades and new things they've added to this firmware. And as you scroll down, you'll find the file list here. Let's talk about this for a second. So if you're installing this from scratch, you're going to want to use the IMG files. And there's two different ones available. There's one that says RG351P, that also works for the RG351M. And then you have one called the RG351V. And if you don't know how to install 351 Elect from scratch, I recommend you check out my 351 Elect 2.0 video, which you'll find here on this channel. Now, if you already have 351 Elect 2.0 or later installed onto your device, you can just use a tar file, which is an update file. And just make sure you grab the one that corresponds to the device you have. We're going to do this install on my RG351P, so I'm going to grab that device's tar file. And it's about 700 megs, so it'll take a minute to download. Once it's done, just go ahead and navigate to the window where it's stored, and then plug in your SD card from your device. Then navigate to your games partition, and then scroll down until you find the folder This is updates. And updating this device is as simple as just moving that tar file over into the updates folder. Once that's done, go ahead and eject your SD card, put it back into your device. As soon as you put the SD card in and boot up the device, it's going to start the upgrade process. And this process takes about one, maybe two minutes altogether. After that, you're done, you're actually upgraded. So let's mess around with the settings and see what we have here. First, we're going to press start, go into game settings, and then we're going to go into per system advanced configuration. And here's where we're going to set our emulators for every device. So on Dreamcast, we can go into emulators and you see there's an option for retro run or flycast. And that's the one I prefer using. Once you select that and back out, you've actually saved it. Let's try another system here. Here's Nintendo 64. You can see here there's six different emulators to choose from. And these two retro run firmwares are new with this update. So let's pick the parallel N64 one. And finally, let's go into Sega Saturn and see what we have available now. And as you see here, there's a retro run version of this emulator as well. So let's pick that one too. And it's as simple as that. We've now set the emulator for each of those systems. So let's jump into Dreamcast first. I always like to test with Sonic Adventure 2 because it's very easy for me to see when there's any slowdown. So as you can see here, the gameplay is nearly full speed. I definitely can detect some crackling in the audio every once in a while. And I have heard the song slow down a little bit, but otherwise it seems to run really well. And same thing with other games that aren't quite as hardware intensive, for example Soul Calibur plays just fine. Same story with Marvel vs. Capcom 2. One of the unfortunate things about Retro Run is you can't see the frames per second, so you really just have to judge it based on the feel of everything. But to me this feels really good. Now there are some Dreamcast games that aren't going to play at full speed, for example Virtual Tennis 2 is probably playing at about maybe 80-85% full speed.
Moving over to Nintendo 64, here's F-Zero X running Retro Run with the parallel core. And as you can see here, it is playing at full speed. This is actually really impressive. Only every once in a while do I hear a little bit of crackling with the audio. I'd say it's like 99% full speed. Other games like Wave Race 64 and Mario Kart 64, they play just perfectly. But it won't fix every single game. For example, Cruisin' World plays at about maybe 75% speed. So it's not going to fix everything, but it's definitely better than it was before. So let's go over to Sega Saturn at this point, and you can see here that it definitely is slow. I would say this is probably like 60, maybe 65% full speed. To me, this is unplayable. But I'm not terribly surprised when it comes down to it, because this chipset in particular is probably never going to be able to play Sega Saturn at full speed. Honestly, I think the most prudent approach is just to wait until next generation, until we expect to have Sega Saturn that is fully playable. The way I see it, we've been waiting almost 30 years to play this system at this point. What's another year or two? Okay, so the 351 Elec update also works on the RG351V. The only thing I would add is you want to make sure you put the TAR file in the SD2 card. Wherever your game ROMs are stored, that's the update folder you want to use. But same thing here, you can go through and you can adjust your different emulators. So let's try out Dreamcast real quick using this RetroRun emulator. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. So here's Daytona USA, and this also feels like it's playing at nearly full speed. The gameplay itself feels really solid and smooth, but there are definitely some audio issues as well. Either way, I'm really happy with the performance of Dreamcast on this new 351 Elect. Okay, so now let's talk about playing Doom mods on this device. Previously, this was only available on Arc OS, so I'm really happy to see it here on 351 Elect now. First thing you want to do is go into the Doom folder, and you're going to make two folders. One is called iWads, and the other one is called Mods. Now within the iWads folder, we're going to put all the retail wads for Doom. So that's going to be things like Doom 1 and 2 and Heretic and Hexen and Sigil. So I'm just going to grab them from a backup of my Arc OS Doom and move them over to my 351 Elect SD card. Next, we're going to go into the Mods folder. And you probably guessed it, but this is where we're going to put all our mod files. And if you don't know how to find mod files or how all this stuff works, I have a full LZ Doom guide on my website, and I'll leave a link to this in my video description as well. Anyway, once you've picked out whatever mods you want to use, you move them over to that Mods folder. So now we have two subfolders within the Doom folder that are going to have all of our iWads and our mods. Now we need to put them together. So back on that main Doom folder, you're going to create a bunch of text files and you're going to give them a .doom extension. So let's start and let's make one called doom.doom. .doom. We're going to open it up with Notepad and then we're going to use this text here. We're basically going to say iWad equals and then the path and then mod equals and then the path. And that's all we're going to do. And this will all be in the written guide, so don't freak out if you think you need to type all this right now. But just to give you an example, I'm going to change the iWad to Doom. If you remember, the Doom Wad was actually capitalized. And I don't need a mod for this one, because I'm just going to launch Doom. So that one's done. Now I can use this Doom file to open up the Doom game. Let's do something with an actual mod this time. We'll start with Brutal Doom Light. So I'm just going to duplicate that Doom file. Then I'm going to write this text in again. For the iWad, I'm going to use Doom. And then for the mod, I'm going to use the bdlight.pk3 file. And this is basically saying, hey, use this pk3 file with this Doom wad. And that's it. We're done. We've actually created a launcher for Brutal Doom Light. Let's do the same thing here with Call of Duty Brutal Doom. We're going to make a copy of it. And then I'm going to copy the name of this text because it's pretty long. I'm going to open up the file. And then I'm going to add that as the mod file name. And then I'm going to save it. And there we go. And just rinse and repeat. Just keep doing this for all the mods that you want to launch. And it might seem a little bit complex, but it's actually a very simple formula. And again, it'll all be in the written guide. Okay, so now when we navigate over, we'll find a Doom folder. And within here, here are all those Doom files that we created. So let's use the regular Doom one here and see if it launches the Doom game. And sure enough, there we are. We're playing Doom. Now I'll tell you off the bat that these controllers are not configured properly. So you're going to want to go into the settings and remap everything. And it only takes a minute, you just go into your joystick controls and then set all of your axes, and then you can also map each button as well. Okay, let's try the Call of Duty Brutal Doom now. And it takes a minute to load, but there you go, you can see it's running Call of Duty Brutal Doom. So there you go, you're now playing PK3 mods on your RG351P using 351 Elec. This is a first ever for this firmware, and it's pretty awesome. One thing I will note is that the gameplay is a little bit choppy. 
and I don't remember it being this choppy when I was playing it through ArcOS. So if you have both firmwares, I'd be curious to see if you have that same experience too, where you felt like this is a little bit choppier on 351 Elec than on ArcOS. Either way, it's just super cool to be able to play Doom mods like this. And once you go into the settings and remap all of your buttons, they're going to work for every one of these games going forward. Another issue I'm noticing is that I can't hear the sound of the weapon as I push the fire button. It sounds like maybe the sound is off on this one, and again, I don't really remember that happening with the ArcOS version. Okay, so one last thing I want to note is that something is up with the Shovel Knight port with this new version of 351 Elec. The game plays just fine, everything saves just fine, but when you quit out of the game, you get this software failure notification. And this didn't happen before. So maybe the team will be able to fix this in the future, and I wouldn't really worry about it too much because it doesn't affect your save game, but it is a little bit annoying. Alright everyone, wrapping up here, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this, so let's take a second and talk about it. People always ask, what's the best one to install, 351 Elec or ArcOS? And honestly, the goalposts keep getting changed for both of these firmwares. At one point, 351 Elec said they weren't going to make any more updates to their firmware, but then the team got back together and they started making more updates again. So as it stands right now, 351 Elec is in continued development for the 351P, 351M, and the 351V. But on the ArcOS side, they have full-on stopped any more development for the 351P and the 351M. The main draw that I have for 351 Elec on the 351P and the 351M is that it has curated graphical settings so that when you start up any game, it's already going to look nice and crisp. In ArcOS, you have to do that manually. And so for beginners, I still think that the 351P and the 351M is best served with 351 Elec. At this point, I would say that both of them are neck and neck when it comes to game performance across any of the different consoles. Nintendo 64 is the only one where ArcOS is just a little bit better than the others. Now, if you bring the RJ351V into play, it's a whole different story because ArcOS has continued to develop for the 351V. And not only that, one of the major advantages of having 351 Elec when you're a beginner is a moot point with the 351V, because that device has a 4x3 aspect ratio screen, so a lot of the games just look great right out of the gate. So in that sense, ArcOS might have better advantages because it can play that better version of Nintendo 64, and it also is in continuous development. Now that being said, they are both great firmwares, and if you have two SD cards, I would recommend trying each of them, and then finding out which one you like the best. But for me personally, I've been using 351 Elec primarily on my RG351P and 351M, and ArcOS on my 351V. Alright everyone, that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming!